Hi, I'm Ed Parco, your host of Inner Edison. And what I'd like you to take away from today's show is our greatest growth comes from our greatest failures. And I normally bring people on, talk about that. And then I bring people on who can help you not go through so many failures. And that's who we have today. Our guest is Pete Moore. Let's welcome him and get to know his journey and his story. Hey, doing, thanks Pete? so much, Ed. Yeah, thanks for having me. And yeah, have I had some failures? I sure have. I mean, I've been in business for uh, 27 years and been through some good times and been through some bad times. So looking forward to a lot of those things that we can talk about here today on the podcast. All right. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on. So my listeners aren't going to know who Pete Moore is, right? Uh, unless they Google you and then they <laughs> could find you. But then, um, so let's kind of go through your background what you because you said you've been in business and you had failures let's talk about a little bit about that and then then we'll talk about how you help uh, entrepreneurs now so they don't have as many failures yeah cool cool that's awesome um so as i mentioned you know i've been i've been going since 1994 i mean i had small businesses through university and stuff like that sort of summer businesses and what have you but you know coming out of university i worked for my dad's best friend for about six months i loved uh Loved working for his name was Peter, too. And, you know, loved working for Peter and doing some stuff there. But uh, during that time, I really realized that working for somebody else just wasn't for me. And from that perspective, never have looked back. I've always worked for myself, made my own way. And, you know, I bought a franchise. And when I bought that first franchise to get going, we did bathroom renovations and kitchen renovations and all that sort of stuff. Had that business from 94 to 2009 when I sold it, you know, built it, grew it, started as a solo entrepreneur and worked my way, multiple truck operations and all that sort of stuff. Along the way, I also picked up another business and it was a cleaning franchise and it was really suffering. Um, so I had that at the same time as I was doing the bathroom one and it was... It had about 30 customers when I took it over. And when we sold it in 2008, um, it had 300. So we 10 times that business along the way too. But I've always pretty much had two or three businesses on the go at the same time. And, you know, part of what I work with with my customers with simplifying entrepreneurship is how to turnkey your business and how to have that happen so that you can have those businesses and systems running and really be the leader along the way. But have we had some failures? Sure, we've had some failures. Like when I sold that last business, that that the Sani service business, um, you know, the person that bought that business from me didn't pay me the full amount, you know? Oh, they, really? Yeah, we set up the structure. And I was a business broker at the time, helping people buy and sell businesses. And we set up the structure so that I got paid, you know, 80% of the business in advance. And then there was a 20% sort of hold back. Well, at the end of the day, I never ended up getting that 20% hold back. And there's some reasons behind that, but essentially um, the guy fled the country. So, you know, was there some learnings there? Was there some stuff there that that uh, that played into to consideration? Yeah, there was. I mean, there was lots of stuff and other things along the way where I've learned too. you know, right now we own shoe stores. We've got two shoe stores, but we did have three. So, you know. How do, you know, we had three, we had to get rid of one. Well, that was a lesson learned. And there's so many lesson learns along the way around what I call the four P's of business. And, you know, they start off with your product, your process, your people, and then the profit. And I've had lessons learned around all four of those too, Ed, uh, through all the different businesses that I currently own and that I have owned in the past in service and in retail and uh, a bunch of the different things that I've done over my 27 years of business ownership. Yeah. You're, do you run a podcast too? Yeah, I do. Yeah. You, you always can tell when a podcast person's on, they just go, you know I mean? It's like, we're so used to talking and everything. Yeah. We just talk. I'm on radio and stuff. First, I want to let yeah. people know that Pete's up in Canada. If you're yeah. in, where and I'm in the United States, yeah. So um, he might use some different words like university, where you might say college, college. But yeah. the other issue when you say fled the country, did they go across to United States or did they go to Europe? Actually, last I heard, uh, that that uh, fellow did move to the states um, because you know, fled the country to us would be he'd go to Canada or Mexico. Yeah, right, right. Uh, you know, but ultimately, you know, it was just a it was just a uh, system where we didn't have the deal structure worked out the right. way it needed to be. And it was a learning experience. You know, I lost um, a good chunk of cash there. And from that perspective, you know, we had it set up that I could take the business back. But I was living six hours away and to take the business back over and all that other stuff. I mean, some learnings there along the way right. for sure. 
Right. No, I just kind of want to explain a few things for yeah. people to understand. Um, I kind of want to go through, you brought up your four process, you know, four things, yeah. the four yeah. P's. Yeah. I, and if, was there anything else you want to add? Otherwise I want to kind of get into those. If you know, I mean, the, my, this concept really is around turning and those four P's, what I, you know, my sort of framework around that is turning your frustrations into freedoms. And that idea of, you know, business owners are overwhelmed, they're frustrated, they're overworked, all this kind of stuff. And how are we setting up those things that are going to turn those worries and wants that you have as a business owner, like what are your worries? First, acknowledging what they are and acknowledging what you want out of your business because we get into business, Ed, to create a better life, right? We want a better life when we get into business, but then we kind of get mired down in the frustrations and all of these different things that as we're going through it and 10 years pass and you look back and you're going, oh my God, like I worked harder than I ever worked in my life and I'm not that much further ahead. And that kind of thing is the stuff that I want to put a quick stop to because setting the business up with these four P's allows you to have the life that you want to live. And that's the stuff we're always, it's never perfect, the fifth P, but you know, it's always a process to enable an even better life. And that's what we want from our businesses. So the first P. Hold on. Yeah. I think that's totally true. I mean, what you're, everything you just said, the, um, but sometimes, um, kind of just lost my train of thought as you, I was trying to stop you because I wanted yeah, sorry, to break man. in, but I'll come back when we, so just keep going. I'll, I'll interrupt once it, once it comes back to me, I apologize. Yeah, cool. Just, uh, just interrupt. Like you said, we're podcasters. So we talk, <laughs> but, um, Oh, I know it is. All right. Yeah, so the one thing about we were talking about, you were talking about how everybody gets, they start a business. One of the biggest things is we've never been told how to run a business. Yeah. We've never been told. We never, there's no college course on how to run a business because people who can't teach. And so that's the problem with the people in the universities or in the colleges. They're there for a reason. They don't understand what they're doing. Um, and so there's no real courses and it's hard to get this stuff going. The other thing I wanted to say is a lot of times people, it's like, the look at a military thing when you're in the foxhole you don't know what's going on except what you're getting shot at you can't plan for the future that's why the generals and everybody else is back in safety and they're not they're overseeing everything the biggest problem with most owners is they're always in the foxhole they're never back trying to plan so I, we'll get in your p your p's but one of the biggest things i think is most people don't take a couple days a week to work on their business and not in their business and that's what you need to do to move forward I knew it'd come back to me. Eventually. I couldn't agree more. We could talk uh, the whole podcast just on that alone. Right. You know, uh, the idea of working on your business and not in your business. And that's, that's that concept that I talked a little bit about before, about when you have a turnkey operation, it allows you the opportunity and the time to start mm -hmm. looking at your business, working on your business, not working in your business managing. It takes it takes you out of that sort of that managerial platform and pulls you up into what I call the leadership platform. And when you're in that leadership program, then it allows you to gain the confidence and momentum to move your business to the next level and break through some ceilings, you know, which is what we all want. Right. And we can talk about this part of it a little bit later. I still want to get into your piece. Yeah, it just cool. popped in my head. And I just thought I'd like to share it. So no, man, that's great. I, I all right. So what's the first P? The first P is nailing your product. So not everybody sells a product. I mean, I'm in I own some shoe stores, so we sell shoes, you know. Uh, but from that perspective, it's a product. But you could use your service or your program mm -hmm. or whatever the case is. It just doesn't those service doesn't, it doesn't make it as yeah. The, yeah. So uh, product so, or service. Yeah. Yeah. So from that perspective, nailing that. And, you know, so many people in the startup mode spend so much time trying to perfect their product that they never even test it. They could blow through a year or two years trying to perfect whatever it is they think everybody wants and nobody actually wants it. Right. So from that side of things, it's really, you know, nailing down the product that people want and the service offering that you're offering to these people. Uh, so that you can create a better life for them. Because that's what everybody's buying. People aren't buying the features. They're buying the benefit of you getting them a better life or, you know, improving their situation from where it was to where you can take them. And when you take them on that journey, that's what the idea of, you know, creating that product and what you need to do. And most people just 
they're especially on the early startup stuff they just take too much time it's like get the thing out there test it test it test it and make sure that people are willing to pay because here's here's the key if you don't have a product that will, people are willing to pay for, you are going to run out of cash and your business is going to fail. And that's essentially what happens with so many startup businesses is they burn through their cash before they even get a product to market. So my philosophy is get the product to market first. You can tweak it afterwards. And then for those of us who have been in business for a long time, what you need to do is you need to be continuously reviewing your product to ensure that it matches the current needs of your customer. And legacy products often aren't the best products. They've just been around a long time. We think it's like, hey, you know, we've done this forever and this is what we sell. Well, not necessarily is still as valuable as it maybe once was 5, 10, 15 years ago. So refreshing those kind of things, ensuring that your customer still has value in that legacy product, let's call it, or those legacy brands or whatever it is that you're selling is a really important piece to hone in to ensure that your cash flow is going to take you through to the next step, you know, of, of creating your journey. Yeah. And I just want to, I, I met a lady at this, uh, there's an event called Secret Knock down here. I'm sitting next to her and she spent a million dollars on her app and it was a relationship app and it's just now in testing right to see and it's like you blew through a million dollars to before you even knew if people wanted this type of app or how it was going to work but that's what happens with a lot of the app startups or the software startups they get a lot of cash and burn through it and a lot of times they have to burn through it in order to get more cash but that's not who we're talking to today but it's just make sure that your benefit the benefits that you're trying to get through and this is a part of sales you know features versus benefits that people want this in the first place just like you said you know somebody might not want you know saw, uh, shoes that have where you can put your feet your toes into for very long because they say that they do this and it yeah. really didn't do that right <laughs> It's a, it's interesting thing, you know, and I just the reason I bring it up is because it really seems to be I mean, it seems basic, but a lot of people just don't put their put it out there to the public. And so many times there's so much time wasted, so much money wasted, so much commitment, so much energy. I mean, it's just like an incredible amount of wastage instead of just getting it out there and tweaking it afterwards. Yeah. I, and I think a lot of people don't even know. We talk about, we're talking about just your four P's right now and yeah. the product and how in business, not only they don't know how to do business, they don't understand the sales process, the marketing process, everything that's branding, all that kind of stuff that's important, but it boils down to, you have to be able to sell the, sell it to somebody, just like you said. And I mean, that's explain it to them, make sure that they're on the same page. It's the benefits of it and make sure it's going to work. Yeah. Um, but you are totally correct about nailing the product and what you're going to do with it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's essentially what I work with every day with simplifying entrepreneurship. I mean, I'm a, I'm a certified business made simple coach and we work through those kind of things every day with our clients as, you know, the next step is getting into the right processes. There are so many processes in your business and, you know, the marketing processes, the operation processes, the sales processes, all of those things. And, you know, a lot of people, don't have them even written down. What is the process to do business? And do your customers know what the process is to do business with you? Are you making it simple for them? Are you making it easy for them to do business with you? How do you answer the phone? How do you hire your staff? How do you open the door in the morning? Like all of these different things need process. And often, again, it's kind of like that legacy thing for people that have been in business for a long time. These processes have been there forever and a day and don't even mean anything anymore. So part of the part of the process of doing the process side of things is really just understanding what each one makes, like how how it fits into your promise to deliver whatever it is you're delivering to your client. And so there I mean, setting uh, so great now setting up automations. When We have our podcast. It's like, hey, you know, set up those automations in place so that everything's there and you don't forget stuff and all of this different. There are so many different ways to improve your processes in the business in every avenue of your business. Those are the kind of things that everybody needs to know. They need to know the why behind the processes. Your clients need to know it. Your team needs to know it. You need to know it. Why is that process in place? What is it going to 
do? How is it going to contribute to the overall mission and vision of our business and deliverable to our client? I totally agree because I'm I'm Sam X military. So we had we had SOP standard operating procedures yeah. on everything. Yeah. So that way, when the next person came there, you didn't have to explain it to him. You just like read that. You'll know yeah. exactly what to do. It's a little more different in the real world in civilian world. You know, the, even if you put that in place, you still have to train them. You still have to do yeah. other stuff to make sure that they understand it. But uh, yeah, you need to know the process. But you brought up about knowing the why of your process. Well, I think the first why you need to figure out is why are you in business? Yeah. Right. Um, why am I doing this? Why? Because it, it. what is the reason you're doing this so you can set it up? for that reason you know it's it, that whole thing about what is successful to you right most people think successful means i have this car that but it doesn't matter that's what the joneses think and no offense to any joneses um or you know i mean that's it's keeping up with that you don't need that's for me it's having free time to go on vacations and other stuff with my wife and we have the money we need to do that doesn't mean that i want to work 80 hours in my business but i will say you know when you have a radio show three podcasts and your business. Sometimes you work a little extra during yeah. that week. So yeah, I call them seasons. You know, you go through seasons. Like for me, I'm doing a ton of podcasts right now, uh, both recording for myself and being a guest. And from that perspective, you know, I'm this season, this couple of month period is busy for that. And then I'll take a couple of months where I'm, I'm lowering them down, but knowing the flows and ebbs and flows of your business and seasons around that really helps again, set up the process of your life because you want to set up your business so that you're delivering the life that you want. And that's what I call guiding principles. So really understanding your guiding principles, not only for you, but for your business, your mission, your vision, your key characteristics, your critical actions, what it is you're doing every day in order to elevate and, you know, work towards that so you can have the life that you want and, and use your business to create that through these things that we're talking about today. Totally agree. Cool. All right. Cool. Can't, can't deny it. So let's move on. <laughs> well, the next one is the big one often. Yeah, everybody uh, has issues with this next one. Everybody. Yeah. And it's people. Yeah. And, you know, I, I categorize people into three sort of layers. The first layer is who's your ideal client? You know, who's that customer that gives you what you need, you know, gives you energy instead of drains it gives you, you know, that really is the person that you're going after, brings you the most business, all of that kind of stuff. And laying out the structure around who your ideal client is, is so important. The next piece, the next P that's really important is the people around your, what, you know, depending on how you lay it out, your supplier, your wholesalers, all of those things, the people that help you deliver your product right? Or your service, all of those people. And then the last one is your team. And often the team is the most important and the one that keeps most entrepreneurs up at night if you're having problems with it. You know, if you're having issues with around your team, that's the frustration that that just drives every entrepreneur crazy. What am I going to do? How am I going to get through this? All those kind of things. So really laying out the right processes to develop all three of these and then understanding how they fit in. Again, that why, how those all fit in to your guiding principles that you're delivering out to your ideal client. And when you have those three, the right product, the right process to deliver it, the right people around you, both from a client perspective, your outsourced partners and all those other partners, and from your team perspective, then you can generate the fourth P, which is profit. And you know what? You can't, you can't expect a product, a profit, if these other three things don't have good things going for it. And when you get your profit, and when that starts coming in, then you can buy some of your time back, Ed. Then you can buy some of the, you know, the things that you want to do when you're elevating and delegating yourself out of the management of your business. And you're moving from what we started off talking about from management into that leadership position. You're buying some time back. Now you can start looking at and on your business because you've got other people working in your business through the process and all that other stuff that are completely aligned culturally and delivering what your promise is to your client. Then the profit comes and you start enjoying some of the freedoms that you got into business for. 
I want to go back to the people because the only yeah. thing I, I do a t- tweak on is for me, I think my team is the most important. How I treat my team and, and the people on my team is the most Couldn't important. Yeah, and they'll absolutely. then treat my customers really well. And then they'll also treat all the ho- everybody we do business with really well. Yeah. And I think it's important to have the right team. And a lot of people will go to an event and come back and fire everybody or they'll fire one or two people because they realize I didn't hire the right person. I hired somebody to fill a spot. And I yeah. think our biggest issues is, you know, the firing fat, you know, hiring slow and firing fast. Right. Yeah. I'm and us you. being entrepreneurs, we're small, usually smaller companies that it shouldn't be an issue. I'm in California. It's always an issue. Um, but it's, um, it's one of those things you still have to do it and you got to help them go, Hey, this isn't for you. This is not the right fit for you. We need to get to find you the right fit and then you get the right person. So, and it's, it's really hard in this time, you know, we have 10 million jobs available and then we just had in Cal and, and then in, we just had 4 million people quit their jobs in August on top of that. So now you got 14 million jobs available because people don't want to work in the United States. Yeah. It's weird. Great, great resignation. They're calling it right. We're having the same issue here in Canada for sure, Ed. Oh, so it's not just us. No, yeah. it's not. People are going through, you know, a reckoning and and determining what they want to do, and and if they don't have complete cultural alignment with their with their you know, the business. And this is what we're talking about here. This is that whole, that leadership side of things is communicating those guiding principles, communicating that mission, that vision, the, you know, what it is, it means to work here and what we're delivering. And are you, are aligned, are you aligned? And when you're aligned with that sort of stuff, when the leadership side of things is, is oozing that people, it's like a magnet. Either people come because they want to be part of it or they leave and get the hell out because they want no part of it. And, and I think that's the part of the strength of the leader when you can do that sort of stuff and ensure that that kind of, it's like, are you with me or are you not? Cause if you're not get off the train and see, you could still have all that be the perfect leader, have the right people or whatever, and then go through like what we went through. So during COVID we, um, we did the most loans, in like 10 years, right? What we normally would do during a 10 year process, we did in a year. I lost really good processors who said, I don't want to be in this business anymore. This is too stressful. I'm quitting and I'm going to go work. One of them said, I'm going to go work with kids. I'm thinking, God, this must be really bad if you want to go work with kids. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. That takes a no, special no. calling, but I'm just like, like I, three kids. I, I had five. Yeah. They're out of the house. So yes, I, I went I, through that for, you know, 26, 30 years, whatever it is, I've yeah. raised them. And yeah. I'm like going, I could not imagine raising other people's kids that call it, you know, in high school and <laughs> grade school, any of that kind of stuff. So I'm just saying there's a lot of stuff that you don't have control over yeah. that you have to be okay with. Um, like our biggest issue right now is our government. We have no idea how they're going to, they come up with these new things constantly. And then it's messing with everybody's businesses. It's messing with that. You have no control over that. You just have to focus on what you have control over and, and just focus on that and and keep going and you will be successful or do like Pete do just have like three or four different businesses going at the same time. And then one of them definitely will be successful. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm not saying they're not all, but I'm yeah. saying, yeah, you have a better I mean, it, there's There's something to be said for sort of splitting uh, the risk around different businesses so that you do have backup plans. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I do what I do and have a couple of different ones. It's like, hey, listen, you know what? Um, like any good investment, businesses are investments, Ed, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, people don't always invest in one stock or inv- put all their money in one holding. And so from my perspective, that's one of the, you know, I look at my businesses as investments and uh, that's one of the reasons why I have multiple because I like to split that risk and yeah, diversify. Yeah. 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 And it, Cause that's what you need to do when you're investing. And so I'm told this is not an investing show. So that's not <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So we went through the process. Anything yeah. else you want to add on that? Cause I'd like to go back to what we, we were talking about earlier in the beginning about working on your business and not yeah. in your business. No. You want to talk well, about I'm good. that for I mean, a little that, bit? That, that, that whole idea is that you need to firm those things up and always be, it's never perfect, but you're always trying to perfect. And I think that's the thing is, is never ending improvement along the lines of those things we were just talking about. Right. And always, as I found doing this for the last year, um, you need to have a, a mentor, you need to have a coach, you need to have a quarter man, whatever you want to call them. You need to have them there to help you because you need someone to over, help you grow 
where and help you through the process and understand and be in some type of strategic, you know, group different types of groups that have yep. to deal with your, maybe your industry and people that have nothing to do with your industry. So you can take some information from other industries, but you need that to help you grow and help you grow your business. But anyway, you know, it's I, good. Go ahead. I always find it interesting uh, around the coaching side of things that, you know, people, um, they'll get a coach for their weight. You know, I want to lose some weight, so I'm going to hire a weight loss coach or they get a coach for pumping iron at the gym. They get a coach for whatever batting practice. But the thing that brings in most of their business, you know, most of their money and their income for their life, they don't have a coach for their business. It's an interesting thing to me. Uh, but just when we were talking about that, it just kind of clicked, clicked uh, that little trigger for me to think, you know, hey, we're, we hire coaches for all sorts of different things around our lives. Yet the one thing that brings our income, a lot of times people don't have coaches there. I have a coach. So, yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, I used to have a coach. So I learned a long time ago to get people outside of my industry. Right. And cause I, I've had coaches in my industry and they're all about, okay, what numbers have you done? Have you did this? This is, I don't need you to ask me that question. I need you to help me grow in other areas, not necessarily yeah. how many vol what's your volume this month? What's this? That's easy. Those are, you know, the yeah. more I call people, the more I talk to people, the more I get more transactions in here, you know, yeah. and you brought up about the, um, the process is like answering the phone, right? I get so much business because we answer the phone. Amazing thing, isn't it? They're like, we called seven other people and they didn't answer the phone. It's like, really? <laughs> How hard crazy. is it to answer a phone? I know it's crazy. And that's the other thing is I, one of the processes for my staff is they'll send an email. And like we sent emails. They haven't, I'm like, don't, okay. You send the email. If you don't hear anything within 30 minutes, you call them. And then, you know, and then if it's one of our clients, if they're in the certain areas, text them. They don't have good cell coverage. They don't actually add, look at their email every 20 minutes like you do, right? <laughs> they don't even look at it. For me, I don't even look at my email. Yeah. I wait for my staff to go, hey, did you see that email? What email? Don't blah, blah, blah. No. And then they explain it to me. If it's important, they'll bring it to me, right? Exactly. And that's what some people say about news. They don't watch the news. If it's so important, somebody will tell them. Yep. So, all right. So let's talk quickly. So we, we actually kind of were talking about how to work on your business and yeah. not in your business by having a coach so they can help you. But I found by having usually two days a week, I actually work on my processes and different things of my business. And then I, you know, with the podcast and everything else, it's basically I'm working on it all the time, right? Because yeah. I interview so many people. And then out of that, I take them or what they're offering and I implement it in my business and it makes a big difference or in, or in yeah. my life. So. Yeah. I love podcasting for that. We get to talk to some really cool people, don't we? Yeah. It opens up doors we wouldn't normally be able to get into. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, um, I use the early morning. So I'm an early bird. I get up usually between 4.30 and 5. And uh, I work through those few couple of hours through my morning routine to work on my business and on my life and all of that sort of the stuff that I want to do for my improvement. And that way it allows me, you know, by the time everybody's up at eight or nine, uh, then, it, then I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of my day rolling. So, you know, it allows me that time to work every day, uh, really a little bit and work through some of that stuff. So whatever the structure is, it doesn't really matter. I think the big piece, whether you're outlining and saying, Hey, Tuesdays and Fridays are my day to work on my business, or whether you're saying I'm going to do mm -hmm. it every day, spreading it out. The big thing is about carving the time that you can, whatever time you can carve and start sl small. Like if you can carve half an hour, carve a half an hour every Friday afternoon. I mean, you have to start somewhere. And I think that's the thing. People think it's just like, a, it's too big. It's I'm going to, and they just procrastinate starting to do this sort of stuff, but sit down, you know, I use uh, a journal and it's like, sit down with your journal and start mapping some of this stuff out so that you can then, you know, get into that habit, the things start small and then grow. And as you're growing that sort of stuff, and as you're building through working on your business, start scribing it down, writing it down, map out that stuff. And I like to use, I've created a my, a one page planner for a lot of my clients. And I use it, of course, myself, but around the idea of, you know, what you want for health, 
what you want for wealth, what you want for relationships, what you want for growth and mission and purpose. And for some people, spirituality is part of that, that journey, you know, but when you think of all that, you can do that for your life and you can do that for your business too, and start mapping that stuff out. And then it's going to become more clear. It's a clarity tool to allow you to start developing, you know, the products, the process, the people and the profit to get you there. Mm, totally agree. Too bad. I agree to everything today. I prefer them when I'm arguing with people and I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm good with an argument too, man. Hit me. I don't have any today. Sorry. Yeah, well, actually, I you're just, a lot bigger than me. I don't want you to hit me. And that's what I do at four o'clock in the morning is I work out. So, cool. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. see, I, I used to do it later in the day um, because actually I went through um, this Dr. Jeff Spencer. He and he showed the whole biorhythm and how you and it was like three to four to five is the best time to work out. So that way you have your energy the whole day because otherwise you eat it up. And I can see that. But with the way our work schedule is and then with podcast scheduling and then we do i do two lives on tuesdays and thursdays one in the morning and one in the afternoon for our the one in the afternoon is helping the brave where we help vets after they take off the uniform yeah, and those are our live on uh, facebook linkedin and youtube i'm not trying to promote it i'm just trying to explain yeah, so i so it messes with that schedule and so for a while there i'm like okay i'll just do it in the evening well then you know how that is it messes with the schedule of the family in the evening so finally i'm like i get up anyway yeah. I might as well just go back to what I was doing. And, and then I realized, wow, I'm tired around noon. Let me go take a quick little five minute nap. Yep. I'm with you. You get yeah. those mid, mid, uh, <laughs> like I said, when you're, when you're an early bird, like we are, by the time lunchtime comes around, you know, it, you're, you're feeling it. Right. So yeah. get, get it's already that, eight hours. Yeah. Get <laughs> through that power stuff, all, all yeah. of that heavy lifting, all of those yeah. thought. I, I like to say I do all my thought work in the morning and I do all the other stuff in the afternoon. Yeah, there was actually a company in our industry that came up with a thing that's called um, it's about winning before noon. Right. And and so if you do all your work before noon, then you have the whole afternoon to do whatever you want. And that and that's key. I mean, because you then you ha it opens up for a lot of stuff. And I mean, do everything in the morning, get it done out of the way, because otherwise you'll procrastinate and not do it at all. Yeah, for sure. They, they, it becomes big then. Right. And anytime right. anything gets too big, you procrastinate it. So, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I mean, because the amount of videos and the amount of stuff they want me to produce and everything, it just gets overwhelming. But if you sit down, that's why I'm wearing black shirts now. I found yeah. that I can do many videos at the same time versus constantly changing shirts constantly. I right? get it. Yeah. So. I learned that from Steve D. Sims to wear black shirts because they never know what shirt. And I just swap multiple hats. There so, you go. Yeah. 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 No, I got to Maybe I'll take you up on that one. I just that way they because I did podcast or I do a, a live and then I'll do another this or another that. Right. And I for, for a four weeks. So basically I would do like five different podcasts. But but I was me the same day, all in yeah. order had the same shirt on for the next five weeks. I was wearing the same shirt and I'm like, okay, that's a problem. We need to make that change. <laughs> yeah. When you stack them and rack them, that's uh, that's a, uh, it, it certainly can come across that way. Right. When you're right. putting it out there. Right. Because I'm, but these were all just people, they, that was their time schedule that yeah. worked. Right. And we, you know how it is you record and I then do. four or five weeks it comes out and you're like, no. I didn't, yeah, okay, let's move on. But it's so what we're getting at is make sure in your processes you look at everything in yeah. your processes, yeah, whatever so that important. is. Yeah, so I mean, because we're right now we're talking about marketing and branding because that's what these your videos do, that's what your podcast is, that's to get the word out, what you do, how to how you can help people and and how you can help them su be successful. And yeah. that's why I do inner Edison. And I Pete, I really appreciate you being on the show today. It's been a pleasure, man. I really enjoyed our conversation, Ed. Yeah, it's been great. Um, so anything else you want to add before we go? I, I think I'm good. You know, from from that perspective, we we rolled through all the stuff and uh, really interested to hear some more from your listeners. If any of you, if any of your listeners have any questions, just reach out to me and I'm always happy to help. What's the easiest way to reach out to you? Basically, your website? You at, at Simplifying Entrepreneurship, just Google Simplifying Entrepreneurship. You'll you'll catch my website there. You can uh Find me on LinkedIn or on Instagram at Pete Moore, M-O-H-R. And always happy to have a chat with anyone. Pete, I appreciate you being on the show today. Hey, Thanks. I want to thank everybody for joining us here at Inner Edison. And if you enjoyed today's episode, you can do what's best for us, which is just follow for more. All right, Pete, thank you so much.